Welcome back everybody to C-Sharp Tutorials for Beginners. This time is number seven. We're going to take some user input and mess around with it. And then at the end, we're going to have a challenge that everybody can try out. So let's get going. We've used console write line a lot in these tutorials, but what we haven't done is used console read line to its full potential. So that's what we're going to do today. But first, I want to show you a new method that console has that will help us out a little bit. So to get user input, we need to ask for it. So we might say something like, please enter your name. If we do that and run it, it'll work. It'll say, please enter your name. But when you enter your name, it'll be on the next line. And that doesn't look as good. So what we need to do is we need to change right line to right. If we do that, when we run it, you'll notice that our cursor stays on the same line because once it writes, it doesn't add a new line like right line does. Now the problem is that our name is shoved up against this colon. So what we can do is we can just add a space between the colon and the quote, run it again, and now when we put our name in, it looks like a nice, nice little form. The next thing we need to do is get the input from the user. We have had console.readline throughout this whole tutorial, which actually does just that. We are waiting for them to push enter so our program doesn't close, but what it does is it actually gives you a string variable of the line that the user entered before they pressed enter. So we can say string input equals console read line. Now don't worry about the squigglies. It actually expects a string question mark, which is a little bit more advanced of a topic, and we'll get there in time. Now what we need to do is add another console read line at the bottom of our code because the minute we try to get this input from the user, it's going to tell our application that it can exit and we don't want that to happen either. So we still need this to prevent our console from closing unless we're running it only in Visual Studio. Now that we have the user input, let's do a console write line and write out the input. Please enter your name, press enter, and then it prints the input that you entered. So that is working. Okay, now let's do something a little more complicated. Let's say, please enter your first name, and then we will change our input variable to be called first name. And then let's copy all of this down here and say, please enter your last name and put in the last name variable. Get rid of this for now. So now what we're doing is we are writing this and then on the same line, we are accepting a first name. They will hit enter and it will go down to the next line, which we will print, please enter your last name. And then the last name will be entered on this line. Then they will enter down. And then what we want to do then is we want to say console. Let's go ahead and write a blank line to put a nice little space. Let's put another console write line. And now let's say your name is colon space that. And now we're going to introduce a new operator, which is also plus, but it doesn't add them. It does what is called concatenation. And that's what puts two strings together. So now we can say first name. And now we can say plus last name. Now what this is going to do though, is it's going to put first name and last name straight together. So what we can do is we can say plus a space and then plus last name. So now we're going to get your name is colon space. Then it's going to put the first name variable that we got from the user and then it's going to add a space to the string and then we're going to add what the user put into the last name variable. And if we want to be even fancier we can add a period. Now let's run it and see how it works. Please enter your first name, Kampa. Please enter your last name, please. Your name is Kampa Plus. 
So that worked as we expected. Now to put the icing on the cake, let's do what is called console.foreground color. And let's set that to console color dot green. So what this line does is it says, hey, set the foreground color, which is the text color, to a console color type known as green. So that's a fancy way of saying we're going to turn the letters green. And we're only going to do it right before we print your name is. Because if we did it up here, everything would be green. So everything under this call is also going to be green. So let's run it. My name. And there it is. Nice and green, kind of like the matrix. Now that we've learned about user input and a little bit more about the console, I have a challenge. Pretty up your console a little bit and create a multiplication wizard that takes two numbers and multiplies them together and gives you the result. I do have a hint for you here. So good luck with it. Next up will be the answer to the challenge as well as any explanations and what will be coming next in the tutorial series. So thank you for watching, everybody. I do appreciate you. Happy coding, and until next time, take care.